Hello and welcome to the FNO show on Bloomberg Quint Live, India's first digital live streaming business news service. I'm Darshan Mehta. Good morning, Agam. Good morning, Darshan. I'm Agam Makil. Here are the headlines. It's a flat but volatile start of the day's trade. The Nifty trades around 11,700. Open interest surges in Hexaware as traders take fresh long positions in its stock futures. And Aisha Motors is the top gainer on the Nifty after Vinod Dasari was appointed the CEO of Royal Enfield for a period of five years. Z Entertainment is a top loser on the Nifty after promoters sold another 0.8% stake in the company in March this year. And mutual fund industry sources say that may have been uh, will meet, uh, meet the short-term obligations. And the Reserve Bank of India will conduct a second forex swap auction worth $5 billion on the 23rd of April. The bond yields <coughs> have a negative reaction to the news. Okay, let's take a look at what the markets are doing. Uh, after a weak uh, close that we had in trade yesterday, the markets again look uh, weak. The Nifty is down almost 20 points at this point of time. Uh, uh, the 11,720 is where the Nifty futures are trading a premium of almost 60 points. So the spot is down 2 points, the futures are down 20 points. The Nifty Bank also was down almost 200 points at one point of time but has managed to react uh, uh, from the lows of the day. Uh, but key below the 3,400 3, mark in trade as far as the futures are concerned. <coughs> what we're seeing is that levels of 11,700 to 12,000 call writers are active and put writers are active from 11,700 uh, to 11,500 levels. So that's the broad trend that we're seeing at this point of time. There is high call build up that's happening uh, at the 11,700 mark in trade. As far as uh, web positions are being built, uh, you can clearly see that in today's trade, put writers are active from 11,500 to 11,700 and call writers are active at high levels. Agam, what are you supporting? Uh, in terms of some of those stocks which will be in focus in today's day of trade, considering an increase in open interest, we can pull up that list with Hexaware and NIT Technologies right at the top, gaining, uh, well, advancing in its underlying and we're also looking at a building, a building in terms of your open interest surge. Uh, of course, Escorts, Reliance Capital and Reliance Infra, among others, which are also seeing uh, advances and buying coming through. So we're keeping an eye on that one. Uh, I reckon we won't have too much when it comes to unwinding in, uh, well, shares or, or rather open interest, but NMDC, Power Grid and Kaveri Seed Company, among others, besides that unimportant and Karnataka Bank. So we watch out for them. But uh, we're keeping an eye on mid-cap IT companies today, uh, considering an advance as well as a surge in, in open interest. Okay, that's the trend that we're seeing at this point of time. Uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the stocks that uh, we will address on uh, today's show. Uh, Aisha Motors, obviously, post a weak set of numbers, has <coughs> reacted positively to uh, the Dasari news uh, of uh, the new CEO, so that is reacting positively. Tata Motors continues to do well in trade. JSW Energy post uh, them indicating that uh, they are out of uh, the uh, EV, uh, uh, you know, electric vehicle. Uh, uh, manufacturing, they are they, that one is reacting positively. India Cements has reacted negatively. Uh, it's been doing well, so a little bit of profit booking. And Hexaware is seeing a little bit of upside in today's trade. So these are the <coughs> stocks we'll talk about. Before we get in our guest on the year, here's a reminder: if you have any queries regarding the futures and option market, you can call us on 0224540441 or write to us on Twitter, Facebook with the Ask BQ hashtag. Okay, on that note, let's get in our experts for the day. We have Neerab Cheda of Neeral Bank Securities and Amit Shah of Pop Capital Markets joining us on the show. Good morning to both of you. Amit, let's start with you again. Uh, well, the Nifty is where it is. Uh, it's not really exactly playing encore to the Sensex lifetime high, but uh, how are we positioned here? Yeah, so if you look at the rollovers of the March series, it has seen on a very strong note. So if I look, had just have to look at the open interest built in, uh, we are starting. We started the contract for the April contract with uh, one crore eighty one lakh shares, mm -hmm. with a very much better rollovers compared to the last <coughs> three months average. So normally on an ideal trend where the market is positioned for any particular upside or a downside trend, the open interest surges close to around two crore forty odd lakhs. So I see there is some room where uh, there is a lot of potential where the open interest can build in for another 40 to 50 odd lakhs in this right. series. So that will add on the positive side. So till the time what we have seen, uh, the, since the time it has given a breakout above 11,600 and the way it has moved uh, forward making a higher top, higher bottom formation, sorry 11,100, the stock, uh, overall the market has showed a lot of strength. 
In the last couple of days, though, there has been uh, positive signs with the market breadth holding back on the positive note. But there has been a doji kind of a formation which is formed on the chart, which indicates okay. some kind of a uh, pause in the current trend. Right. So though Nifty has been hovering around the all-time high of close to 11,760 on spot, yeah. uh, we are likely to see some kind of a time to price consolidation, where on the downside, uh, 620 will act, uh, 11,620 will act as <laughs> momentum support. And on the upside, uh, 11,760 on the spot will remain as the resistance. Okay. So, uh, keeping that view in mind and plus the rollovers uh, open interest position, uh, I believe uh, this series can be on, uh, closed on the positive note. Uh, though too early to say, but uh, till the time we are holding about 11,600, I see uh, the trend remaining positive. Okay. Any strategy as such on the Nifty or the bank? So, uh, uh, considering the pause which I mentioned on, there can be some kind of a price and time pause. I believe uh, a covered call strategy can be deployed for Nifty at this point of time, where uh, on the uh, uh, the strategy is buying a future at this level. The future is trading around 11,720 odd, and uh, simultaneously. Uh, selling a 12,000 strike call option. This is a monthly contract uh, mm. call option, which is trading somewhere around 62 odd. So uh, on the downside, 11,600 is the key support level. So that should be the stop loss level. And on the upside, I expect the target close to 11,900 to 12,000 levels on the higher side. Okay. Uh, well, uh, a covered call for those who are new to the futures and options market is a strategy employed when an investor holds a near-term neutral review with a positive bias on a security or an index for that matter. And this involves selling a call option of the asset in which the investor has bought securities in. And in this case, of course, Amit is recommending to buy futures and uh, simultaneously selling the 12,000 call. Uh, that's the strategy he's playing out. But uh, let me get a Nirav also into the conversation. Nirav, good morning to you too. Uh, how are you seeing trade pan out for the indices and how would you employ futures or options? Yeah. Uh, good morning, Agam and Darshan. Uh, see, uh, for Nifty, you know, the trend continues to remain positive. Uh, you know, it is making a higher top, higher bottom formation and week on week, you know, you're getting a higher top as well. Uh, you know, the rollovers Amit has already spoken about, you know, they have been positive in the last month, uh, you know, 1 crore 40 lakh shares were there in the March series. Now that has come to around 1 crore 70 odd lakh shares uh, for this series. Uh, you know, the average, long term average is around 1 crore 70, 1 crore 80 odd. So we are uh, near the average again, you know, and uh, the best thing that has happened is the longs have rolled over. So that is a very good sign. Uh, the PCR has opened up, you know, it is still positive. Uh, the wicks will continue to surge up now uh, with this being you know the election month the uh, these two months the VIX can actually go up towards the 25 to 30 levels that we've already seen you know every time the election comes uh, the VIX actually surges up towards those levels so we still have time the VIX will go up towards uh, those levels. Uh, you know, what will happen is, you know, when the VIX goes up, you get very volatile trades and you might just see in this month, you know, a 100 point up and down movement in the same day. So, yes, uh, the, you know, underlying trend is positive. Uh, so, if you get a 100 point dip uh, towards the Nifty, towards, you know, 10,700, 10,650 odd levels, that will be a good level to buy at. You know, there is a broad based buying which is going on in all the stocks and indices. And uh, that is why I believe, you know, buying on dips will be the best strategy for this month. Uh, one can buy on dips uh, with a stop loss of around 11,600 on the futures uh, for Nifty. And, you know, you can expect anywhere in between 11,850 and 11,900 to come for this month. Stock specific, uh, Nirav, uh, which stocks do you want to talk about today? See, uh, two stocks. Uh, one is a breakout stock, uh, BEL. Uh, if you see BEL, you know, every time it came up towards 95, uh, you know, 96 levels, there used to be selling which was coming in. Now, after a long time, you know, with good volume support, uh, this uh, stock has broken out above the 96 level. The, you know, uh, rollovers for this stock were also very positive and you are seeing incremental open interest on the long side uh, being built in. I believe this stock will go up towards 110 levels. So one can buy even at current levels with a stop loss of 95 the second one is a you know a buy call on indecent bank uh, it is already above the breakout you know the breakout had come around 1500 odd levels but you see other banks uh, you know vis a vis uh, indecent bank indecent bank had been a laggard you know with uh, comparing uh, indecent with kotak and hdfc bank and even icic access bank i believe uh, indecent bank will uh, reach towards its all-time highs uh, which is around the 2000 levels it can probably come uh, in this month 
month itself you know there's some good aggressive buying going on in this stock so one can buy this stock at current levels the stop loss for the same would be 1735 now as you know the show went on the uh, stock has actually moved up but you can still buy this at current levels uh, with a target of around 1820 and you know second target can be 1850 Okay, uh, those are some of those long calls for Nirav. But Amit, you also have two long uh, ideas today. Yeah. So I have a buy uh, first on Oro Pharma. Mm. The stock has seen a very strong monthly consolidation <coughs> in the band of 700 to almost 820 odd levels. So I believe uh, the more it sustains above 800 level, the more strength it will build in off this long consolidation. <coughs> Sorry. On the downside, the stock has made a very good uh, short-term uh, supportive action around 790. That's that's where on the early chart it has given a breakout level, so that will act as a support level on now. And uh, sustaining about 800, the stock this time can head towards 830 to 840 levels on the higher side. So that would remain as my uh, short-term target. A uh, second buy is on Tata Global. The stock has uh, showed a very strong rollovers, and it has seen a. a sizable uh, time and price correction from 330 close to our levels and now uh, hovering around a uh, 200 odd band right. if you look at the rally what it had begun from 130 to almost 330 odd level it is hovering around 61.8% uh, retracement level so that's a very good support on a monthly chart it has given a breakout above the previous month high so uh, holding at uh, about 210 i believe the stock will see a good traction of open interest mm. since the inception of the april series also it has seen some kind of a short covering and now today we are seeing some long additions we getting built in i believe uh, on the downside 207 will act as a good support and can look for 225 levels on the upside okay okay let's discuss some of the stocks uh, aisha motors for one uh, despite an extremely weak uh, set of numbers that came in for the monthly auto sales uh, the counter has reacted positively uh, given the management change that has happened uh, amit aisha motors uh, uh, is the worst over uh, uh, aisha motors not escorts uh, If you can pull up Aisha Motors, the Scots is down in today's trade on decent open interest build up, but Aisha Motors is up three and a half percent. So if you so if you look at Aisha Motors, though the stock, uh, you know, on a broader aspect, it has been steadily making a lower top, lower bottom formation, but there has been some kind of attraction in terms of open interest as well as volume in last uh, uh, since uh, Feb and onwards. So making a higher highs as well. So I believe uh, the recent uh, low of. Uh, uh, 20000 or uh, 250 will be a critical level to watch out for this expiry and we need to wait and watch how it uh, consolidates at this level but to me it is a clear buy only about 22000 just mm. to play the pullback but not till that time uh, it is crossing this levels okay uh, we move on to tata motors and it's actually showing a very interesting move too over the past couple of days uh, considering uh, the little bit of strength that we've seen tata motors return to and around well february we saw tata motors you know flirt around with levels of around 150 since then it has climbed to 190 what is also interesting is that at this point in time its 50 and 100 daily moving average is moving right about in tandem where its 50 daily moving average is looking to move above that 100 day moving average so it will be interesting should that crossover happen we will we'll, you know we we'll pose this question to our uh, experts as well um, so nira uh, let me take this one up with you how are you seeing trade on tata motors now uh, time to initiate fresh longs how is the risk reward ratio looking to you Yep. Uh, see, Tata Motors. You know, as I've been always saying from Jan onwards, I believe you know the worst is over for the stock. Uh, it did fall in Feb, but you know the amount of recovery that it's seen. You know, amount of buying uh, open interest on the incremental side that it is seen has been amazing. Uh, I believe it has broken out above 186 uh, levels. Now, on a closing basis, if it continues to remain above the same level, I believe it can uh, reach 225, 230 probably in this month itself. May be in in a week or two itself uh, you know that is the amount of buying that has come in the weekly volumes you know we are only on uh, tuesday morning and you know the weekly volumes have surpassed the previous week volumes already so the volumes are really really high i believe uh, tata motors is poised to you know make a good comeback uh, you know uh, for this month one should be buying at current levels you can keep a stop loss of around 184 for your longs Okay, that's the view that's coming in on uh, Tata Motors. Uh, the next stock we want to talk about is uh, JSW Energy, and, and it's been doing well for the past few days. Let's see what's doing. It's up another three percent. Open interest build-up is negligible. But uh, Nira, what should one do on JSW Energy? Yep. See, uh, this stock. 
was in a consolidation for a, from a long long time you know in between 70 and about 64 60 or uh, on the downside you know it has broken out about the same today uh, i believe this stock can now reach towards 85 odd levels uh, 85 to 90 odd levels one can buy the stock at current levels you know long positions are being seen but again uh, end of the day we need to see you know if the long positions are carried forward in the stock what happens is long positions aren't carried forward from the past several months so if they are carried forward probably you might see you know further buying coming in uh, into this stock as of now you can keep a stop loss of 70 and go long for that target of 85 and 90 and if we can also talk about hexaware technologies because that is also seeing a lot of strength and with a substantial increase in open interest too and uh, it has made uh, quite some gains over the last three to four sessions so it's building on those kind of uh, gains that we've seen uh, buying coming through up two and a half percent today as well uh, the spot is at 367 but there isn't too much a difference between its april futures and its spot uh, that said, uh, Amit, uh, how are you viewing trade on this one? See, the overall trend uh, and the structure of the stock is very much positive. Yeah. On the downside, it has taken multiple support around 320, 325 mm. mark, and it has uh, showed some kind of a, a buying momentum from there on. So looking at the overall open interest and the uh, volume uh, trajectory, <coughs> I believe the stock is uh, uh, witnessing a lot of strength at current levels, and it is now inching closer to the resistance of uh, 370 odd. It is almost there. So I believe the more it sustains about 370, it will build more strength and fresh buying momentum can be seen from there on where on the upside possibility of uh, testing towards uh, 400 to 410 will be seen in this pullback okay all right okay so that's the sense that we're getting in uh, let's take a look at some of the other stocks that are buzzing in trade india cements uh, for one is something we want to watch out yesterday was up six percent in trade and today a little bit of profit booking is seen on the counter nirav uh, india <coughs> cements uh, would you be a buyer on this decline Yep. Yeah, just before India Cement, you know, uh, one thing I want to, you know, clarify about JSW Energy is, you know, there's been a lot of delivery buying, uh, you know, the buying that I was talking about, uh, uh, you know, people buying it for delivery probably two, three days and then, you know, the delivery again coming down. I'm not quite sure if JSW is uh, in the FNO uh, uh, there at this moment. Uh, now, you know, for India Cement, uh, I believe 120 is the level to watch out for. Uh, you know, for India Cement and a cement as a whole, uh, there had been a lot of buying in the month of uh, March. A lot of uh, positive rollovers had taken place, and those rollovers have, uh, you know, positive rollovers have taken place in April as well. So, India Cement, yes, it has broken out above the 100 levels. But I believe, uh, you know, 120 till it is crossed, uh, fresh buying should not be initiated in uh, India Cement. It is a long-term resistance, uh, you know, falling trendline resistance at that. And uh, that has been going on from the last one year. So until that is broken above, I will not be buying India Cement at this moment. But uh, uh, again, if it comes down to 100 odd levels, it is definitely uh, going to consolidate and probably again, you know, try to reach above 120. I don't see it falling much, but it is not a buy at this moment. Okay, hold that thought, guys. Uh, we Let's just address the auto sector too, because the automakers have been going through a rough patch over the past few months, and the same uh, could not be said about the tractor makers till last month. The latest numbers show that Escorts has also seen a sharp drop in sales last month. So what's caused, uh, you know, the last frontier to lose its grip? Let's ask Bharat Madan, uh, well, uh, SS Scott's Group Financial Controller. Um, so Madan, uh, thanks for joining us and, uh, uh, well, taking the time out. If you could tell us about what trends uh, you are witnessing in the tractor segment now and have things changed drastically or is, is the, the, the month gone by just a one-off? No, I don't think there's any significant change in the global demand per se. I think this was very much on the expected line in March, but this time we all knew the festive season had shifted to month of April instead of March. So in spite of that, the kind of number which we had I think, done, I think it's a pretty decent number. All the quarter has actually grown by about 5 percent. And our guidance for to the industry was for somewhere in between minus 5 to plus 5 percent. So I think overall we see good traction there and we I think the momentum will continue. So we don't really see it's really coming as for a surprise because it's very much on the expected line. So overall demand continues to be over for us. What about inventory levels, uh, Mr. Madan, uh, at, at your dealership? Uh, what kind of uh, levels are we talking about right now? 
Well, we are at less than four weeks of inventory with the dealerships, so which is not really high compared to the normal level of four to six weeks. We are probably at one of the lowest levels in inventory with the dealerships. What about uh, price hike? Have you taken any kind of price hikes? Is there any plan to take any kind of further price hike uh, going ahead? The well, last hike we taken was in third quarter, which was I think somewhere in November, end of November after the festive season was over. So after that, we not seen much of the inflation pressure so far from the commodity side. So whatever was there, I think it got passed down. And but yes, there's some some inflation which has actually come in in the last three four months, but it's not really very significant. So okay, we'll take a call based on how the industry reacts and, and take a call on the pricing accordingly. Uh, what are the states in which there is uh, considerable demand traction which still remains in comparison? Uh, are there any states uh, which uh, can currently lag? Yeah, so if you look at the, especially the northern market, and uh, obviously those markets have done well. So all the entire rural world of the UP, MP, Rajasthan, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, so, so these states are doing extremely well. I think that's a growth, which is what is visible in the overall growth trend also. So compared to that, you look at the market in the south and western areas, they are actually declining. So which is what I think the overall industry trend looks like. So March, we see industry going down by about 17%, and most of it actually came from the Southern and Western markets, but the northern market decline was low at about 10 percent. So, so we think the similar trend in the last three four months. So, so which I think is probably will continue at least for another quarter. So, if it this quarter again, Q1 will be very strong for these northern markets. FY20, what kind of outlook can you share with us? So, FY20, I think it will all depend on how the monsoon pans out, and the initial indication what you are getting is going to be slightly delayed with some El Nino impact. But I think if this monsoon is even this slightly deficient, it's not normal, but if it's well distributed, we can still see good single-digit growth happening in the industry. So, so, so that way it will look positive. But yes, if the monsoon is patchy and it's is really real, real deficient, and it is in deficit, then it can be a concern for the extra special. Okay, and Mr. Madan, a final question. Uh, some of your peers uh, have seen a much, much larger decline in comparison to escorts. Uh, would it be safe to assume that escorts has continued to gain market share? Yeah, we have. So I think if you look at the quarter four numbers, we have now reached a market share of 15% in tractor industry against 13% last year, the same quarter. So 2% gain in Q4 has happened. Overall, if you look at the full year, the FY19, we gained market share by almost 110 basis points. So, against last year's, we almost touching now 11.8, 11.9% sort of market share. So, so yes, I think we've done better than industry. We've grown almost 20% this year compared to industry growth of only about 8%. Okay, okay, Mr. Madan, we leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining us and taking us through uh, the month gone by for the tractor season. And of course, we'll continue to get more updates uh, with respect to uh, well, the farm equipment sector. But uh, we have run out of time on the show. So on that note, I'm also going to uh, well, thank our FNO experts, Amit and Neera, for joining us and taking us through uh, their views on the markets. For more updates on the FNO space, you can also check our website out bloomberqueen.com. And on that note, it's a wrap on this edition of the FNO Show. But for more news and updates, stay tuned to Bloomberg Quick Live.